Hey everybody, Dustin here. In this video, we are going to turn some dirty rocks into some clean rocks. So watch along and learn my process for cleaning. Hey everybody, Dustin here. I've got a lot of requests on how I clean my crystals. So today we're gonna do a crystal cleaning video. I'm gonna clean some of my Haunted Ridge stuff and iron out. There is no exact recipe for this process. A lot of people ask me like, how much time exactly, how much do I use? I wing it every time, I'm sorry. So watch along and hopefully you'll have the confidence to wing it too. So here's what I'm gonna clean up in this video. Found a box of stuff from Haunted Ridge in my shed that I hadn't cleaned. Nice variety of different formations here. Lots of botroidals, some different chalcedony coated pieces, and a couple with some nice crystals. So I'm gonna spray these off. This is the most important part, getting all of the dirt and clay off them. So before you can use any iron out or anything like that, you have to get all the dirt off the crystals. So I'm doing that here with a pressure washer. All right, that's always my favorite part to spray off the top side of these crystals. So we got a little preview of what they're gonna look like. Now I have to start flipping them all over so we can do the backside. So not as fun as spraying off and revealing the crystals, but spraying off the backside of these is even more important. There's lots of pores and holes that have lots of clay. It takes a long time. And after I finished the backside, I had to flip them back over and get the front again because those got dirty from all the dirt on the back. All right, pressure washing is all done. These I don't think will need to be soaked in iron out. These are pretty clean as they are. I don't really see too many oxide stains on here. This one is just really hard to get clean. But these over here, I'm going to soak in iron out. I'm gonna fill this up with some water and then I'm gonna put the iron out in and we'll get started. So the important thing here is you want to have a big enough container and fill it with enough water to completely submerge your crystals. All right, this is my secret method. I take my iron out and I have an old container of it here and I pour some into the old container. Uh, probably about one to two cups, just depends. Not a ton, but not just like a tablespoon. And then I use my hose to put some water in there and mix that up. So we'll get some water in there. All right, that should be good. Put my cap on and shake it up. And then we'll open it up here. I could do this while hand holding the phone. Ah, built up some gas in there. So then I'm just gonna pour it in and this will help it be a little more even in the water. So hopefully you don't get those black stains. Then I like to do the hose once more just to kind of stir it up. Then we'll put the lid on that and check on it in a little bit here. All right, it's been about eight hours here. Let's check and see how they're doing. Well, that one is looking really nice. Still think they need a bit longer, so I will check on them tomorrow afternoon. All right, it is day two. I decided to take this one out just after I finished filming last night. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I think that cleaned up fairly nicely. There's a little bit of limonite pseudomorph here and higher up one tiny spot that uh, I could have gotten off if I'd have left it in longer, but eh, whatever, it's done. All right, the vast majority of these are done, but I think I'm gonna leave them in for one more day I don't see any signs of uh, the black buildup that sometimes you get if your mixture is too strong. So I think we'll be okay for one more day. 
a couple pieces like that one right there still has some stuff on it and that one there that is underneath the crystals and is not going to come off we'll check on them tomorrow and they're going to be beautiful and sparkly all right they are all done soaking and looking beautiful what more could you want just kidding we'll flip them all over here in a second and i'll show you the crystals start off with this one here that i only soaked for like eight hours it's important that you don't soak these for too long that's why i stopped after three days four days is pretty much the max all right let's check this one out this is the kind of hollow cave one that one turned out super cool and some limonite pseudomorph down in there after marcasite. And a little bit of staining still on this one. I don't know if it was just because my mixture is weak or if I needed to leave it in longer. But whatever. It looks pretty cool as is. I think it's done. And here's this one. Nice botroidal. Here's another good one. Interesting kind of smoky color to these. Interesting stalactites on this one. And this little guy, got a cool nub in there. That white stuff is barite, and that will not come off. Odd little shape to this one, but a cool little botroidal piece. Another nice botroidal stalactite plate. And this one's cool. Check out those funky stalactites. I almost wonder if microbes were involved in the formation of these. I don't know. Endless, bubbly, sparkly clouds on agate here. And here's another gray one. A little bit broken up, but you can see the agate inside there. Super thin plate here, but check out that cool formation. And another botroidal. Lots of botroidal stalactites in this batch. We're getting there. And these are the rest of the botroidals. This one here never did get entirely clean, but whatever, they're clean enough, it's done. Look at them sparkle. Let's look at some of the little guys next. That's a cool little one. Kind of a different uh, Chalcedony coated type crystal here. Cool agate banding on the back of that one. Here's the little piece that I picked up when uh, I was hunting for agates with Jeff in my last video. And a couple more little guys here. This one has neat agate bands. And this one does too. And neat fortification agate banding on the back of this one. And unique Chalcedony coated crystals. And here is some of the more sugary medium sized type crystals that you'll find at Haunted Ridge. Got a couple pieces here that have really nice agate banding. Some limonite pseudomorphs on this one. And again, I feel like it could get soaked again if I really wanted to get that tiny little bit of oxide off, but I think it looks cool. This one, I guess, um, the oxide stains just got underneath the crystals because that's not coming off. But it gives this piece some cool color variation. And again, has neat agate. And this is my favorite one of those type pieces. Got a nice little sparkly crystal nubbin on there. That's a cool one. And now for the Chalcedony coated pieces. Nice agate banding on the back of this one. And look at that sparkle. Nobody likes these Chalcedony coated ones as much, but they are pretty cool in their own way. Has a little bit of a uh, limonite pseudomorph on there. That's what looks like dirt between the crystals. It's not, that will not come off. And here's another nice Chalcedony coated piece. I thought this one had really cool agate bands and these crystals are kind of neat look at them sparkle looks almost like dragon skin or something 
And one more Chalcedony coated piece. I thought this one was really interesting because somehow when it was forming, some of the Chalcedony broke off and you can see quartz crystals exposed underneath and those quartz crystals aren't broken. They kept growing. So that's a really interesting piece. And I really like how this one turned out. Got some stains under the crystals there, but it adds unique character. And this piece has really cool agate banding. Need to move here, I'm losing my light. Okay, there we got sunlight again. It's a nice medium-sized crystal point piece with fantastic agate, look at that. And again, you have the limonite pseudomorphs. Those won't come off, those are just there. But they add cool character to the pieces. I really like this one, that's a nice one. And the final piece here. I think this one is my favorite. This took forever to clean. It has so many holes and pores on the back, but those are all lined with cool agate. And check out these crystals. Really interesting, kind of smoky, slightly pinkish to these. That is a cool piece. And now you're ready to clean any lace agate quartz pieces that you find here in southeast Missouri. The most important tips that you need to remember are to clean the rocks as good as possible first before you soak them. That will help the iron out do its work. And make sure and check on them. It may take longer than a day. It may take longer than three days. You may have to re-soak some pieces. The iron out works better in warm temperatures. And in summertime, about four days is the max that you'll get out of a batch. And if you get the black buildup on your crystals, you can get that off by just leaving them sit outside and the rainwater will wash it off. Hard to believe, but I've done this before in the past. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video. Rock on.